I was going to write about the final episode of Star Trek Picard, but I couldn't decide whether to disclose spoilers of the episode or not. I tried writing a version both ways and was satisfied with neither. Suffice it to say that we, my gorgeous and talented wife and I, enjoyed the entire ten-episode season very much, and we look forward to trying to see the new season sometime next year. With that out of the way, let's go on to another concern of mine, the state of broadcast TV. Our use of the regular broadcast channels has decreased greatly over the past few years at a steadily trending downward rate, and nothing I've seen in the promotional spots for upcoming shows on all the networks has much changed my mind. The trend since the last writer's strike of supposedly unscripted reality shows like Survivor, Wherever, The Amazing Race, which isn't, Big Brother and the like, left me cold. In point of fact, the only competition show I enjoyed was Last Comic Standing, with talents like Eliza Schlesinger, Alonzo Bowden, and John Heffron winning different seasons of the show. Then there are the game shows, like the recycling of The $20,000 Pyramid with Michael Strahan, Match Game with Alec Baldwin, To Tell the Truth with Anthony Anderson, the originals like Hollywood Game Night with Jane Lynch, and the queen of the crop, Ellen's Game of Games with Ellen DeGeneres. There are times I think that Ellen deserves a rant all to herself. She seems to me to be hiding a cheerily sadistic streak with the surprise jump scares for her guests on her talk show and the events she features on this excuse for a game show. I just don't get into dropping people through trap doors, spraying them with some concoction that probably feels as disgusting as it looks, and some of the other things she's done. Other competition shows? American Ninja Warrior seems to me to be a pointless exhibition of glorifying a confidence course, as they now call them, to see which muscled-up man or woman can make it through the obstacles in the least time. They try to engender identification and sympathy for the contestants with their backstories. Yawn. And now on to the scripted series, returning in new. The drama and action-adventure shows on the air today don't grab me at all. Tearjerkers like This Is Us never got me. Interlinked shows like David Wolfe's Chicago Trilogy, Fire Med PD, the Good Doctor, which started out reasonably but went off the rails fairly soon, Tom Selleck's Blue Bloods, and the last few seasons of Elementary, Johnny Lee Miller's interpretation of Sherlock Holmes in a contemporary setting, it was interesting, and Lucy Liu as Dr. Joan Watson was a good twist at first, and after a bit it got a bit formulaic and predictable. Some of the newer shows didn't attract me from the initial teasers, like The Good Place, where I think Ted Danson and Kristen Bell were wasted, in large measure, a Superstore, where even America Ferreira wasn't enough to draw me in, and Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, where the concept didn't even come close to hooking me. So when it comes down to it, much of what I watch on broadcast TV nowadays is news, and precious little of that anymore, PBS showings of British comedies like As Time Goes By and Death in Paradise, and some of the British detective shows like Poirot, David Suchet is superb, and Midsummer Murders. Uh, by the way, and some will cry heresy at this, the Benedict Cumberbatch version of Sherlock Holmes isn't quite to my taste either. Uh, they resort to too many visual pyrotechnics, in an attempt to show Holmes' thought processes, and I think it confuses the viewer. It certainly did me, and I fancy myself a particularly educated sort. I think it's about time I wrap this up, having given you at least a fleeting glimpse of how I watch and what I think about television in 2020. Answers rarely and not very much at all. Until another time, then, that's a wrap. Thank you.